Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Teocon Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Thursday, January 19th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. Today's epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 through 26, and chapter 6, verses 1 through 2. Brethren, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us have no self-conceit, no provoking of one another, no envy of one another. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Look to yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. Let us be attentive. The Lord spoke this parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a marriage feast for his son, and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast but they would not come. Again he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, Behold, I have made ready my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the thoroughfares and invite to the marriage feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But... When the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment, and he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. In today's gospel reading, we actually have a twist on the great banquet parable. It's not just the same banquet parable where the master is saying, come to the feast. And the one says, well, I just bought oxen. Or the other says, I have a wife. Or the other says, I bought fields. It's different. And what's different about it is, the nature in which the servants are treated, but also the ways in which the guests at the banquet are treated. So let's take a look at it a little bit. The first, we have the rejection of the feast, as is expected in the other stories. One says, I must go farm, you know, and the other goes and takes care of his business. And then the others treat the ambassadors of the master shamefully, it says, and even kill them. The master responds by killing all of them. A vile and brutal way to respond to a vile and brutal response to the invitation to come to the feast. But then there are others that are invited and indeed to some degree compelled to attend the feast. And these people gather so that the entire hall is filled. But as the master is walking in and amidst the ones that were brought into the feast, he observes one without a wedding garment. And he says to him, friend, where is your wedding garment? And the man has no answer. And is he given a wedding garment? No. Is he forgiven for not having a wedding garment? Well, no. He is bound hand and foot and cast outside of the banquet into the outer darkness where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is not what we would expect. So what's going on here? The parable is slightly different in that the expectation is once you were invited into the feast, you do conform to a certain way of life. 
A garment is an appropriate garment to wear in a wedding feast. If you are not properly dressed, you're not really serious about being a participant in the wedding feast. And so I think the message, if I am to understand it, is that we as Christians need to make sure the invitation is not just an invitation where we can come and not expect to be changed. It's not like we can come in and just be as we are and do what we wish to do. Our Lord reminds us numerous times throughout the Gospels that those who follow after him are known by their fruits, known by their works. It's not that the works save you. No, the invitation into the feast saves you. But you have to show some kind of response to it that's not cavalier or blasé but instead serious, recognizing that this invitation is one that is calling for a new opportunity and into a new way of life. And so those who refuse to dress appropriately are indeed bound and cast out. And the same would go for people in the church. All are invited. We are called to care for everyone. But once inside, we are expected to behave in a certain way like a Christian, to do the things that show that we are Christians, that let the evidence speak for itself so that we don't even have to give an account. We can just show the great works that have been accomplished in Christ's name through our example and so that we can go and show that we are the kind of people that Christ wants to be in the wedding feast. It's a challenge and it's one that we have to take seriously. But what is true is that once we don the wedding garment, we are in. And there's nothing that the outside can do to try to bring us back out, which is a truly comforting thing. Christ has done everything for us, but we in our own way should show the gratitude that is appropriate by doing the things that we can, by loving him, by keeping his commandments. So thank you very much for watching this video today. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please feel free to give it a like. And you can subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I thank you very much for joining me. Leave a comment below if you find that you have some questions about what I spoke about today. Feel free to share it with your friends. In the meantime, I pray that God will bless you and those that you love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Thanks for joining me, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.